has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Ooh, epic intro. Welcome everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Uh, today we're actually going to repeat an oldie but a goodie. I've actually tried this, for those of you who have followed my channel in the past, um, uh, we're going to do a little Darkest Dungeon run. We have some new DLCs that have been uncovered, and I wanted to try my hand at them. I finally figured out how to record and not have the issue that I was having in the past. The issue was I couldn't uh, sync up the audio with the visuals of the video itself, and I wondered why. I finally figured out that because I've been recording my mic with the uh, audio from the game, anytime it gets off, then I can't adjust the visual uh, video to actually cue in with the actual audio of the attacks for instance so everything was kind of shifted while my dulcet tones here can be off a little bit and not be horrible i don't like that the game audio was off the game plays fine so the way to fix that was literally to separate the video uh, audio of the game from the audio of my mic for those of you that were interested uh, we are going to start a new one. I, I toyed around a little bit just to see what the new DLC is like. So you can see here, uh, we have quite a few things added to the uh, vanilla version of the game. So the Crimson Court and the Districts and the Flagellant were all part of the Crimson Court DLC, which I purchased in the past, which you guys have not seen me play. Uh, also, Color of Madness, and I don't know if Shieldbreaker came with uh, this particular uh, upgrade, the Color of Madness DLC new areas, new maps, new bad guys. Uh, and Musketeer, for those of you that are fans of the game, will know that if you were a patron that basically uh, helped pave the way for this game, uh, that they actually got this uh, DLC for free and it was locked behind that. No one else could get it. Well, they finally decided to relent on that and give it to everybody, which is cool because it's content that everyone should get to enjoy, I think. So it's just a new character. So we have three new characters here. Uh, we have a couple new DLCs. Uh, and new things to explore in there. So let's get into it, shall we? It's basically saying because I have no first uh, save file that this is new to me, so are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. Now we have Radiant Mode, which is basically uh, Easy Mode. Darkest, which is the typical original settings of the game. And Blood Moon, which is extremely difficult. We're not going to do that because it's been a while since I've actually played the game officially. And full disclosure, I've never actually completed the game, so... Let's actually name our file, what are we going to call this, uh, how about BM's Darkest Dungeon Run, huh? How about that? Oops, I can type, I swear I can. Alright, let's get into it. Now I'll be quiet during these intros so you guys can fully appreciate them while guiding. 
You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. You bet we will, Bloom. You bet we will. All right. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, the stage coach destroyed and the caretaker gone. That's the guy that was driving the coach. Uh, you'll have to make your way to the journey to the Hamlet on foot. Here we go. So that's a, a long load up time. And again, there's nothing I can do about that. But I'll edit most of those out for you guys. So you don't have to sit here for it. But while we're loading, I can tell you a few things about the game. This game is basically a dungeon crawler. Very fun. I played it many, many hours. Like I said, I've never beaten it. But, uh... It has entertained me for many days. So there's pop-up tutorials uh, throughout the game. You can, I think, shut those off. I keep them because it's friendly reminders. And plus, with the new DLC, so there might be something that shows up that I haven't seen before. Uh, basically, what they're telling you to do is to click on your map icon down here. You're here. You want to go to the next room. So basically, you click on the room. The one thing about this game that I really do enjoy is the fact that almost all of it can be done by mouse alone. Brigands so those have that... run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. Anyway, I was saying, for those of you that are perhaps uh, impaired in a way where you're not uh, as swift with the keyboard as some of the younger kids, you can play this game and enjoy it full its full extent. I do enjoy the fact that I can really lean back in my easy chair and play this game. And I have. I wish they had this controllers. this thug in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. And for those of you that may know of a uh, uh, mod, for example, that allows you to use a controller to play this game, by all means, post that down below, tell me where I can find it. I would love to be able to do that. Um, but basically, we're in our first combat. This is the easy one, one guy to fight against two. And these are the two characters you always start with, Dismas and Renald. Dismas is a highwayman, that's his class, he's basically damage DPS type. Uh, Renald is basically tanky, he can do damage, but by and large, he's there to soak up damage and prevent damage to the rest of the team. So let's actually bleed this little jerk, shall we? Oh, not big with the bleed. But, I can use any of Renault's moves, and these three are attack moves. This one here is a protection move, like a self-buff. This move doesn't have enough to kill him if I hit with the lowest, but I do have a better chance to hit, and I have a chance to stun, so let's try that. Confidence oh, no. surges as the enemy crumbles. This, of course, is just letting you know that you've got treasure. This is your loot. And we have supplies that we'll get, uh, that we'll purchase with that loot later on. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Sure is. Now, we don't have a whole lot of torch like Leave that. nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. This is going to be a very important feature of the game. Torchlight uh, uh, portrays basically the background setting that we see in the game, and as it gets lighter or darker, excuse me, the torchlight goes dim, the screen will actually start to go dim, and it will become very different feel to the game. It gets creepier, the animations are the same, but by and large you'll hear background noises, and you'll notice that we lose some of the buffs that you see here. So we have better dodge and scouting, better chance that the monsters are surprised when the light is bright. The light goes dim, some of those dip or go away completely, and then you have more chances for more loot or uh, more crits, but so do the bad guys, which means they can like, waste us pretty easy. So a lot of people will do dark blends to get An more ambush. Money. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. The downside of running it with those dark runs like that is because of the fact that you can literally get swamped 
we're bad guys that are just creating left and right. So as you can see, we have increased stress, which is another factor of this game. Monsters are more likely to crit, which are the, you know, the bad guys. Um, so that's of concern as well. Now we have this move, which they've upgraded. Uh, it is still a single target move. There's nothing special about it, except for the fact that it is a de-stealther. It's a new uh, component to the game, is that there's some characters that have stealth on them, which means you can't target them directly. Well, this move can. And it actually de stealth those targets, which is extremely useful. It also is a self buff, and this buff used to last for like two, three rounds or some such. Now it's actually for the entire battle, so we can actually buff up with it. I'll show you how it works. Minimum damage. Here's our buff. And as you can see, per battle, extra damage, accuracy, and crit. That's a very nice increase. Now, this one here is a self buff. It gets torchlight. It also marks the target. Let me show you what that does. But first, Here's our torchlight at 70. We activate this, and now we're at 94. AoE damage, he will do that. That's why he's kind of a target for us. That can be a stun as well, by the way. Oh, good dodge, guys. Alright, now it's our turn. Um, you'll notice, uh, and I'm not going to go over every little detail of the game in this first video. But I want to point out something. You'll notice that our speed is 7. Well, the speed of these guys are minus 1 and 6. Just because my speed is higher than his doesn't mean I will go first. They do a, a random roll that you don't see. They add your speed to that roll, or in this case, subtract it. And whoever has the highest number goes first. Whoever has the lowest number goes last. So speed is an indicator of who might go first, who might go last. But there's no guarantee. This guy may roll so well, we may roll so poorly that he actually beats us and attacks first. So you never really know that, which I do kind of dig. That way it's not, I guarantee I'll beat him, uh, I should beat that guy, uh, I, he'll be second or third. No, it's different than that, so I kind of dig that. So now because we're up front, we want to limit to this one move that we can use, and we're going to bleed this one. There we go. That's a nice little damage over time move. Just like it says, it's two damage per round for three rounds. And this round is his turn. Whenever his turn activates, like you see my character is on his turn right now, that bleed would have fired off two points of damage to him. That's extremely useful. There's another damage over time that's a green teardrop like this, and that's blight. It's like poison, disease, however you want to disease. Like poison, because there is disease in this game too, by the way. Uh, let's just hold on and just wail on this guy, see if we can take his health out. He doesn't have sound here. I have to take him out there. A dizzying oh, blow to cool. body and brain. Oh, the guy to return the favor did Ooh, and he did a crit, so he does it for five rounds instead of three because he crit. We have that same ability. We need to finish this and find out. Now uh, he's dead because of the blood. If he gets his turn first, he'll die. Sadly, no. Uh, and that bleed, uh, once it ticks off, he will die there will be a corpse left behind because he's dying from a damage over time move that corpse will disappear. I want that corpse to disappear because he's a very poor fighter up in the front range. So instead of attacking him and leaving a corpse, I'm just going to move. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Yeah, so he shuffles forward and he can only do a minimum amount of damage with this rush shot attack. It's not the AOE move that he normally does. Again, Annihilated. Nice we will stretch the move for ourselves. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. I want to notice something else. Not only do we relieve some stress with that move because of the crit, uh, we also got these new buffs that they've added. Each character gets slightly different buffs. They don't last forever. Um, in this case, Dismas gets, every time he crits, a plus two speed for the next round. That basically allows him to attack sooner, right? His buff for critting, I think, is the extra protection buff. It's really useful. Now this is our, we've completed the quest. Here's the return to the hamlet. When you complete your quest, you may click this. Here though, if you found like other treasure, you want to press your luck further, maybe there's more map to explore, or something you left behind that you want to pick up, like this treasure chest. Now here's the thing on this one. It's a bandit's trap chest. Something doesn't look quite right with this one. Now I can just interact with it. I can ignore it, which means I don't pick it up. I don't touch it at all. I you know, basically decide not to click on it. I could drag things to this, um, like keys, for example, we don't have one. If I had a key, I could probably open this safely, but 
sadly I don't have a key. If you do click this, it's, like it says, it's a bad idea. So, we're just gonna go back and complete the quest. Now at the end of each quest, you will tally up all the stuff that you are taking out. Notice that the food we did not use uh, gave us a little bit of money. Any of your provisions that you purchase, if you keep them at the end, you'll sell them back for like a fraction of what it costs. So like this normally costs, I think, like 75 a piece. They would be selling it for like five. So we're not really getting a whole lot of money back, but it's better than losing it all together. Uh, we got a little bit of money, nothing stellar, but the 5,000 for completing the quest was nice. And we got a little uh, heirloom stash. Uh, these are but uh, portraits, deeds, and crests, which are these ones down here. And you see we have one and four, we didn't get any of the others, but when we get to the hamlet, you'll see that they gave us a bunch to start out with, so that's helpful. The last thing they show you is basically any XP you earned. In this case, they earned enough XP in mean, this one fight to get to level one, because they were level zero to begin with. That's extremely helpful. Also, they get quirks. And in this case, if it's red, it's negative quirk. And if it's white or yellow, I guess, it's a positive quirk. Uh, so you see we have a perfectionist. He takes stress, which is this meter that you see here. He has a little. He has uh, two, oh, no, sorry, 16 stress. He has zero. Uh, he takes five stress every time he misses an attack. That's not good. Uh, this negative quirk is a Warren's foe. If he's fighting in the Warren's, a specific map location, he takes more stress just because he's in the Warren's, because he hates the area, for example. But the uh, yielding is positive quirk. He has a death blow resistance. All characters do. If you get to zero health, you don't die in this game. You are on what's called Death's Door. From there, if you take another point of damage, you do a roll check, basically a death roll resistance, death blow resistance, excuse me. And if you pass it, then you're still alive, still at zero. If you are, uh, if you fail that check, your character officially dies and is wiped out of the team. Very uncool. And it's going to happen, so you get used to it, guys. It's a, unless you're playing on the easiest difficulty, that you're going to lose teammates, and that's the frustrating part of this game, which makes it so much fun, actually. But death blow resistance will basically increase his chances that once he has those checks, he will not die. Um, once you heal, the good news for that though is once you heal and have at least one hit point, all it takes is one hit point, and you are off death's door, you can take a hit for another 50 points of damage. As long as you had one hit point, you are now at zero and you are not dead. You are on death's door again. So that's extremely helpful. That's one thing about the game that I do enjoy. Now let's go to our handle. This is what it's supposed to look like once it's completely upgraded and looks all pretty again. Uh, you'll see what it does. Welcome like. home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Yes, I am. Now, this is our first week, and it's basically our journal entry letting us know what happened. In, in this particular case, we only had two characters. They are now leveled up. The ruins has been unlocked. That's the next map location we can go to. And they successfully completed the mission, which was the escorting me to the hamlet. Now look at all the goals that we have here, guys. We got a lot of stuff that you can do in this game. A lot, a lot, a lot. These are all the different types of characters that we can unlock and get to level 6, which is the max. Here's our busted up hamlet. We have uh, a few things unlocked right now. Most stuff is locked behind uh, progression. Basically, as we complete more missions, more stuff will happen. Or the hamlet will unlock like the blacksmith and the guild. That's how we upgrade our armor and our weapons and upgrade our skills or purchase new skills. Uh, we have Abbey, Sanitarium, Tavern. Those are all locked right now. So is the survivalist. But these things are unlocked. Let's take a look at them. Here's our graveyard. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. Whenever you lose a character, you'll actually show up here in the graveyard when you go back to the hamlet, you can check it out. It'll show their level, I think, who they were, you know, their name, what kind of character they were, so he was a crusader, uh, when he died, what week, what he died of. You know, it's kind of morbid, but it is important. It's kind of nice that they added that little touch to the game, I think. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. So for all these wonderful voiceover work, this is Wayne Jean that's doing a great job here. Um, Wayne uh, has done a fantastic job. They brought him back for these other DLCs as well. 
to add his little flair of touch to the game. But if you ever want to play these back or if like you clicked it by mistake and missed the video or the audio, you can go back and replay them here. Notice all the ones that we haven't unlocked yet, guys. These are all the boss fights that we're going to do. Notice how the boss fights are in threes. It's the same boss, but tougher. And that's because it's a level one fight, a level three fight, and a level five fight. That's as you progress and fight in those areas, you unlock him again, basically. And you get more of the story for who the prophet was or how the siren came to be. Very cool. Uh, but by and large, it's still the same fight. Just they're tougher, they hit harder, they're harder to hit. They're harder, they have more hit points and stuff like that. Here's the new DLCs for the Crimson Court. You can see they added a little bit of content here as well. Uh, Color of Madness is the newest DLC that we're exploring as well. So there's this farmstead area, uh, defeating the Miller. So he's clearly a boss, and so is the Sleeper. And this is a new uh, thing about this one was it's the unlimited run, where you can literally fight until you run out of supplies or just get to the point where you're like, I'm tired and I don't want to play this anymore. So this was a, a neat addition as well. We'll get into that, of course. And here's, of course, the actual darkest dungeon, the, the main fight that you're trying to complete, which I've never done. Um, and I've never finished that. So, again, it will be interesting once we get that far. And here's our Nomad Wagon. This is where we get trinkets and stuff that we can equip our characters with to help make them better. Trinkets and charms gathered from all the forgotten corners of the earth. So you can see we can't afford these. It's going to take pretty much all my money just to get one. But these are not the best trinkets in its prices. Now I can decrease the price by investing in this merchant. Uh, I can increase your wagon size, which means more trinkets show up each time. So instead of two, it'll be four or greater. Uh, I can uh, decrease the cost by 10% each time I click one of these things. So 10% of this will drop it down to 4,500 a trinket, which is saving me some money, but not enough to make me still want to buy these. And they're like pretty lame ones. The debuff skill is not particularly useful right now. Move skill chance basically pulls or pushes bad guys, which shuffles them around. And that's helpful, but mm, nothing that I really want right now. So we'll probably avoid her for the time being. But now this one here, here's our bread and butter. This is our stagecoach. We definitely need to uh, unlock this guy. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Okay, so now this is where you will get new characters to fill your roster. Your roster size is limited to 10. We can upgrade that, which we will do here in a moment. But let's look at our characters here that we're going to pull on to our team. We want a team of four. That's the biggest team you can take on these missions. We have a Warren Scrounger, so he has a better scouting chance in the Warrens. He has a prone to investigating the Dark Arts. This is a negative quirk, which means he'll interact with things that you probably don't want him touching. Or she, excuse me, this is a woman who knows her bound up boozies over here. Uh, she is a secondary healer in that she's lame at it, but she can heal you. Remember, if you're at zero health, you're on death's door. That's bad. If you have at least one hit point, you are not on death's door anymore. So she can get you off death's door. That is helpful. She can also remove blights and bleeds with this move on herself as well as any of the team. That's extremely helpful as well. Um, she's a blighter primarily so you see that she has plague grenades noxious splash she's also very good at stunning she has a couple moves for that she also has a bleed move for melee combat which is kind of nice but again you can only pick four at a time the four that they pick is random except for these two guys they always get the same four moves at the beginning of the game we can unlock these other ones later we can't do it right now but this is a pretty good kit for her so that's actually a pretty good start for us what better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield now here is a Vestal. This is a primary healer. This is her basic role and job. She has a single target heal, which is very good and gets better as we level it up. Uh, she has a team party heal, which everyone on the team will uh, get a little health bump. The good news is, is she can heal everybody. So even if it's one hit point, remember, if everyone's on death's door, she does a party heal, everybody's off death's door. But we have to unlock that. So it's not the best start. These are the four core abilities that I usually unlock for her and try to level up first not that these other ones are bad it's just that she's not usually in the front ranks so she is experience religious visions and delusions that's not good she is extremely tough though so she has extra hit points i love that and she has evasiveness so she has more dodge than she should normally have so that's not a bad fighting vessel right there a sister of battle pious and unrelenting now this is our team this will be the starting team you always have 
their names for these two characters will differ. And you can rename them, by the way, if you don't like it. You can rename the hero. You don't like their color scheme, you can change it. I think they have four different color schemes per. So if you want to have them, you'll have a slightly different look to them. You may do so. I like the, the red one. Uh, but again, you can do that for anybody. They're not super exciting and thrilling, but it is better than having everybody look the same. Yeah, I like the black coat and the red scarf. Um, the one thing we're going to do here, though, is we're going to uh, unlock the stagecoach, some of its abilities. So your roster size is limited. So we'd like to... Great heroes can be found even here, in the mud and rain. We're using some of our deeds and some of our crests to level it up. Remember I said they gave us some for free, right? This allowed us to increase the size to 13. Now again, you can only take four on a mission, but these guys are gonna get stressed out, burnt out of fights, or level up beyond the fights that you have. So by doing this, this allows us to have a bigger party selection of different types of characters too. Now this here, we're gonna do as well. The stagecoach, every week we fight and come back, whether we win or lose, they'll have more people in the stagecoach, only two at a time. This allows it to be three at a time, so we'll have three characters to choose from. And we can pick none of them, one, two, or three. As long as we have room in our roster, we can take as many as we want. But there'll be repeats. There'll be like guys we don't need, like another Rinald. They'll call him something different, but he'll be a Crusader, another Highwayman. But like more Vestals, you know, team healers are always good, right? So definitely something we want to upgrade. And that's burning up quite a few of our heirlooms right now. But that's okay. That's what they're there for. We'll upgrade everything before too long. But now it's giving us the cue that it's time to go. Now, if we had trinkets, we'd trink up and you know give everybody a buff of some kind. Trinkets are basically like a, a mecca of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. Sure does. Uh, this is the uh, an example of your rewards. It tells you what your mission basically is. If it's a short, medium, or long run, short runs don't involve camping. Uh, medium and long runs do the level of the mission, level one. So these guys are gonna be stressed out because they're not level one, by the way. These guys are already have some stress, but they're okay with it because this is the level they should be fighting at. We have trinkets that'll be a, a reward, in almost every case, I think. Uh, you will get some type of heirloom as a guaranteed uh, reward. Uh, so usually if you know you need deeds, you go looking for the one that has the deed uh, reward so that you can level that one up, right? Uh, and some kind of gold monetary reward, right? So not the best, but it's our first. So this is probably where we're going. The cost of preparedness, measured now in gold, later in blood. Now this is going to be a big and important part of the game. You have to provision for fights. So food will be needed as random food checks are going to happen uh, as you wander through the dungeon. They basically one piece of food per person. Doesn't matter if he's not hungry or not. If they hit a food check, everyone's gonna eat something. So you wanna have enough for the four. So it increments of four are usually good bets. So four, eight, 12. You have a limited number, and then we can take more. So 12, not a bad idea, but we probably only need eight for this very first mission. It is a short run. Um, shovels are good when there's barriers in the way. Uh, we need keys to unlock treasure, so maybe we'll take a couple of those. Uh, if we're bleeding, we can cure that with a bandage. And we'll just take one of them. We already got a free holy water and a free antivenom. The holy water came from her being on the team. The antivenom came from her being on the team. So that was nice free supplies that we don't have to worry about. And yes, we can sell those at the end if we don't use them. It's only going to be like five, ten bucks. But again, free's free, right? So. We don't have to invest in them. If we wanted more, sure, we could buy more. But you see, this is getting pricey. Uh, laudanum is not something we worry about right now. I'll explain that when we finally get around to buying it. But we do need torches. Torches are needed to keep the light up. Remember, less money, but less likely to be damaged when the light's up. So light is good for when you're starting out. When you finally feel secure, have some trinkets, some good quirks going for you, you could probably do dark uh, runs where you basically snuff the torch and get maximum damage and get maximum loot for it. But uh, uh, for the start, we're probably going to go a little pansy here. Just err on the side of caution. Now the we have herbs. Herbs are great for removing debuffs on your character. 
And they're also good for interactions. All these will be used for interactions by and large. Except for the logum, I think. I don't think they've ever added anything where the logum has helped. But you'll see what I mean when we get to interactions when we get to it. I'm going to grab an extra bandage and an extra holy water just because. And extra shovel. No, no we don't need an extra shovel. We'll just do it. Alright, well, this is our provisions. If we still have some money left in case this doesn't work, you're going to want money to put for the next fight. Right? So you want to save a little bit of the kitty, just in case. Uh, there's been times where I've been flat busted and we couldn't even take but like a piece of food. So at that point, you're kind of hosed. So you do what you can. You march on through and try to find some treasure and bail out before you get a food check. But let's go. By and large, the things that I always take with me are always food, a shovel or two or three. Keys are always important for treasure. Uh, and torches. Those four things. If I don't have any of those things, I've uh, misprovided uh, for my characters as far as I'm concerned. Alright, so here we are. Characters down here. Here's our map setup. And in most cases, they do show you the whole map. So that's nice. They don't show us the treasures and stuff in the map unless you scout. Torch. Extra one. Three. Gotta love it. See our torch lights going down. I'm gonna pop this torch to keep it up though. Don't want to have an extra chance to surprise these guys. See, if we surprise them, they don't lose their turn, but they act last. So that's gonna be nice. And we're gonna blight them. It's not enough to kill them this round, but it's close enough. And all that will be nice to kill them. So he'll take five damage when this fires off, when it becomes his turn. So he's officially dead. We can ignore him. Well, I am going to see if I can straight up kill this. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Nice. That's not only a damage move for her, but it's also a self heal. I'm gonna buff up because we know this guy's dead anyway. The light. The promise of safety. Yeah, I buff a little way. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. So what I mean by interactions is you see this slot here, right? Optional. Dragging on here to use it on this object. If I wanted to try to drag this to here, it's entirely possible that would be some kind of benefit. Sometimes it's a negative thing. So be real careful when you start swinging stuff in there. Uh, like you set things on fire like books, for example. There would be books that are bad. But if you take a torch to it, it's real bad. So, you, you know, stuff like that. And you will learn that as you progress. You'll be like, oh yeah, I remember if I did that, that that's a negative and bad thing we don't want to do. I think this is just one that you just click. It's an unlocked strong box. It just sits there. I'm fairly sure we just open it, we get treasure. Not only that, but we got a first um, trinket. Notice this is a specific one for jesters only, but it gives the jester accuracy and dodge. That's a really nice trinket to find. We need a jester, of course, now, but we'll find one a little bit later. Okay, so that was a scout. Here is our first obstacle that will bust it up with a shovel. Not always, but almost always. And there's a battle. We don't know how strong or tough that battle is. It could be a boss fight. It could be nothing but like another couple of guys. So let's go find out. We have to progress, so we're just going to go this way. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Okay, now here's our first shovel interaction. You notice how we got a shovel in the last treasure chest, so that was nice. If we click this, this will go away. That's the ideal scenario. If I don't, and I click this because I still have to go forward, we can clear this mess without a shovel. We take stress, everybody. Everyone takes a little damage, and we lose some torchlight, which is bad. If I want to backtrack and say go around another way, I can click this and go backwards. It's annoying, but you can do so. All right. And we've got a fight on the very next square, so I want to keep that torchlight up. The way is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Well, you notice as we're fighting these guys, here's their names, their general stats below, which is going to be good information for you. I uh, honestly think they made a mistake by showing us these stats. If the developers are watching this, by all means, take this as a hint. You could, say, hide some of these stats, like the resistances down below, until that you stun them or try to stun them. Maybe you shouldn't know what it is, how high a chance it is. After you've unlocked it, much like their skills, which you see are blank, 
as they start using their skills, the skills will start filling in and you'll see what they're capable of doing. You know, you could keep the hit points, maybe the dodge and speed and all that fun stuff. But by and large, I think you should have left that a mystery and then build it up as they progress. But maybe that's harder than they wanted to make the game. Uh, but what we have here is a guy with a sword, a guy with a club, and a chick with a wand. And she looks scary, but these guys are nasty too. Damage is not of concern. We have a couple good healers on our team. Uh, so maybe this chick is the one we want to take out. Let's shoot her in the face, shall we? Right in the booty. Didn't kill it though. Alright, so we have the ability to blight these two guys. Blight her. Stun her. Which means she loses her turn officially. But let's just try to... There we go. That's not enough to kill her this turn, but it'll be enough to kill her next turn. See if I can stun her with this move. This also gives me torch light as well, which will be extremely useful. As sure the light stun, gains though. purchase, spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. Now this guy worries me, so I'm going to try to stun him with this move. It's the most accurate move I have as well. It does minimal damage, but him not getting a turn is probably helpful. Ah, see, so now that's his first skill we see, bumping the knife. And this is her first skill we get to see. It's called Stressful Incantation. It knows how to pile stress on us and took some of the torchlight away. It's extremely annoying. Uh, so now she's officially dead. Unless somebody heals her, she's gone. So I can ignore her all night. So let's do that. Let's go take out this little dude over here, shall we? The ground quakes! The slow death, unforeseen, unforgiving. He has damage, but he's, he's kind of the weakest of the team. Uh, and I can heal him up if I so choose, but I'm not really worried. Well, you know what, let's do it. I still have a chance to swing with my crusade. Be gone, fiend! Very nice. Keep it easy. Slow, but not that low. Got a nice scout. Okay, so we have a treasure room with a battle. Curio room with a battle. It's probably still treasure or something kind. Uh, curios here and here. Let's go to the treasure first. Actually, I'll have really more bodies. Torchlight's getting low. As the torchlight gets low, you'll see, though, that you get more money. Like if I were to snuff the torch and try to pick up this, I'd get more for it. But I don't want to do that because we're getting ready to get into a fight. A fortune waiting to be spent. A couple of gems, got an emerald and some jade. They're worth different amounts of money. We also got an extra key. We're not gonna get on the keys. Let's get this fight on. Oh, we've seen her and him before. We don't know what he can do yet, but he's probably seen that sword, is my guess. Well, let's try to blight her. Stun probably one of these two guys. Let's do so. He's a Wolverine Claw guy. He's a Skeletor. He's got higher uh, damage. Let's stun him. Yeah, so he'll get his turn. But that's okay. What can you do for so Graveyard Slash, huh? That was brutal. Fortunately, I have a lot of things in this character. Look me up. I've got more stress when you're off. We start piling on everybody. Die from that yet. Fuel of rage. I'm blank now. Right, let's do this one. It's called Grape Shot Blast. You notice how the red dots are linked up? And you see these little links here? That means I'm hitting all three of these characters potentially with this move. Precision Ooh, and right. power. And now she's done. Good dodge, buddy. Okay, so I'm bleeding. So here's our indication that we can make the bleeding go away with a bandage. Which I will, so I don't take more damage over time. Here's an AoE move that I can probably get both of them at links up, as you can see. Continue the onslaught. She's dead Destroy next turn. Them so at this point, it's all. healing at the team if at all possible. Removing stress if at all possible. 
The wounds of war can be healed, but never hidden. At this point, she's probably going to get her move before her, because her speed's very high. There's no guarantee. So let's actually try to pass on it. Here we go. We did get a heal on nice. Compassion is a rarity in the fever pitch of battle. All right. Ghoulish horrors brought low and driven into the mud. This is another supply that will show up in the game. Uh, dropped, and then later on you can purchase these things too. Or, sorry, not purchase, uh, earn them. Uh, this is if you get cursed with the Crimson Curse, which is a DLC that they've added to the game, which we are playing. So, you see we have a treasure chest here with the keyhole. That's the key, right click on it, and you open it safely. If you didn't, you could probably get treasure. You won't get as much and there's a chance that you can get hurt from it, so it's... In Radiance, very, very may we touching. find victory. So now we can go this way, which we don't know what's down this path. We can backtrack and go this way, which we do know. So let's actually do that. Play it safe, right? We'll probably eventually go down that hallway anyway, but I'd rather scout it, if at all possible. And every time you get to a room, there's a chance that you'll scout. Once you've been to the room, I don't think it'll scout again, though, so be aware of that. Take out for buddy. Yeah. I'll take it. Keep that play it up. Ooh, got okay, a couple graveyard slashers. And a bone arbalist. Looks like he's got some big hog on uh, crossbow. Uh, let's see if we can blood. Skeletons are usually blood easy. Bleed not so much because there's not a whole lot of blood inside of them. Uh, notice how the resistance is like 200. We can debuff that, but the chances you're gonna bleed a skeleton is pretty slim. Right. So let's see if we can see it. There we go. Now he's gonna bleed for sure for 8. What I mean is, he's stunned, so he'll burn 4 on him when he gets his turn, but he won't get a turn because he's stunned. Then his next turn, before he gets a chance to move, he will take another 4. So that's 8 points of damage, but he needs to take 12. So I need at least 4 points of damage to make sure he's a uh, gone ghost. At least I got my buff. Oh, let's stun these guys if at all possible. Keep the damage incoming to a minimum. It's all about control. Well, control the fight is better to keep. Nice dodge. It's his turn. Oh, these guys are speedy, but he's faster than everybody. So, let's creep shot. Yeah, that's five. That's enough. Okay, he's officially dead now. Uh, I need to heal. Right, just take this guy out with a straight up hit. Let's go for this one. He's dead now. Two, two guys are gone. I'm out of there. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Get me in your neck. Special leap too. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Yeah, we'll take that treasure. Okay, so here's a curio. That's not treasure. But. Holy Fountain. You can interact with it and it gives us like a little heal and a little stress relief. However, if you have Holy Water, you drag that to it. Bigger heal, bigger stress relief. And it's always that way. The mistaken. match is struck. A blazing star is born. We'll get a scout, but we'll just press on it. Uh, it's a trap we missed. Carelessness will find no clemency in this place. Torches, though. Still no scout. I'm gonna backtrack. We still have to hit this. We have to hit 90% of the rooms, which means pretty much all but one, all but two, uh, if it's a bigger map. Uh, another trap. Yeah, Ancient traps lie in wait, unsprung and thirsting for blood. Now we can walk backwards instead of going through this door. We can do like so, but that will stress out our party. We will not be attacked walking backwards because we are clearing the hall. So we're just going to go into this room and turn it around and walk forward. Why they don't flip, I don't know. It's just something they decided to add to the game. And now we're walking the correct way. And it's faster. We won't burn up as much torch light. We won't stress as much. Here's our first food check. Notice how it's using four food. They will all regain health, even though only two of them need it. If we didn't do it, they would take damage, and they would take stress, and it would be bad. But you can out heal that stuff. Getting into enough fights, so don't worry about it too much. 
but it is annoying when it happens. Uh oh. Oh, he's stealing my stuff. You see this? So, he has a kleptomaniac feet, a uh, quirk, excuse me. And the quirk is always there for this character. So, it kind of introduces you to the fact that they're going to interact with things you don't want them to. He stole our money, is what just happened there. And he can do that anytime he wants. It gets real annoying real fast. Now, I have one more torch left, but I don't want to use it because sometimes we use torches for cure reactions. Holy water, though. There's no fight. The holy water gives you a buff preemptively, it protects you from blights, bleeds, disease, and debuffs. Gives you more resistance. Don't mean that you, they can't land, but it's less likely to land. So that's nice. We're going to press on our luck, see if we can get a little more money out of this fight, shall we? Such a burden of finery risks life and limb. All right, now she's wounded the most. I'm going to make sure she's wounded up. Since we're already walking inside the room, I need a bunch of food to heal her up. So we know we won't get a food check in the room. All right. Doesn't look like I need the torch. I'm going to burn it. Notice how the stress is pretty bad. Monster accuracy damage is up. Monster crits are up chances that we get surprises of them. Instead of us being surprised and just acting last, their version of surprising us is we get shuffled, which is real bad, because like, he's only good in position one and two right now, so if he got shuffled to the back, I'd have to waste turns moving him forward. Same with her. She was actually better in the back two spots, and this character usually do. So if they get shuffled to the front, they're maybe limited, nothing they can do other than shuffle backwards. That's not good either. So... You being surprised can be really bad. Them being surprised is obviously the goal. Now we have new guy, new guy. Well, I don't like his berets. So I'm going to shoot him in the face. I missed him. He's got a good dodge. I didn't see that. Uh, let's try to AOE stun. That's what she's great for. She has this move here that not only can double blight these guys, blight for each of them, or she can double stun if we get lucky. Not one is the new guy. You know what he's getting to do, pretty much. He's going to shoot. Uh, I'm going to start wailing. It's okay, that was a whole town, buddy. Quarrel's one of his moves. Uh, he's got a shield and an axe. That looks pretty nasty. Let's buff up, shall we? Get some torchlight as well. Yeah, that's looks better. Well, at least that's a point less damage because of that protection buff. What the hell was that? Stress. What that was? That was tempting goblet. You gross. Uh, we don't really need to heal so much as we need to kill things. Their formation is broken. So he's a Maintain the offensive. Oh, uh, I want to start working on these two. So notice how they have protection. Uh, that means damage resistance. That doesn't apply to lights. The first hit, sure. Those hits are completely ignored. They will go all the way through with a full amount of damage. So this would be a good way to take these guys out. Oh, I'm gonna shoot this guy. Get him closer to death. As the fiend falls, a faint hope get this guy blossoms. Here, because the closer he is, the less he is to be able to use that effectively. So, the trick for that is you gotta clear the corpses. Uh, we don't have a move that does that, unfortunately, on this team. So we have to just straight up damage the corpses. So, at least I can heal off them. Not, not ideal. Right, let's uh, AOE blight this. Or we'll probably get it for sure. And he got it too, so he's going to take damage, but not enough. Uh, let's do some uh, scatter shot. There we go. A little closer. Uh, try to go. There we go. Now he might not be able to Slowly, here gently. or here. This or is how a life is some taken. Kind of lame attack because he's supposed to be ranged. So that's going to be good news for us. A singular strike. Okay, so let's show you something else here. So now we blighted him with his another move. Now you see how he takes nine damage per round. It's because they're additive, right? So he has the blight on him from the last round. 
and the blight on him from the round we just hit him. And it says it's for five rounds. That's misleading. Five rounds will be for the blight we just hit him for. Um, so the other blight will tick like two more times, I want to say. And then this nine will drop to probably like four or five. And then it'll be two more rounds or three more rounds after that. Uh, but it's certainly enough to kill him. Not before he gets his turn though. So expedite his death shell. A death by inches. Not bad. No. We are wounded. I could heal, but the mission's over. We're gonna get this last key here. We over provided our keys, apparently. And it looks like we have our first chance to decide what treasure to drop. Now notice, if you hover over them, it tells you how much you can sell them for. 20 each, 15 each, 15, 15, 20, 25, 5 each. So we might as well use the food. I could just delete it, but I got some you know, There's no reason to eat it, because once we leave, we'll fully heal up. The stress is the only thing that stays behind. And death, of course. So, we are finished. Notice we also got a journal page, and this is something else that they've added, uh, where they tell various stories. So if you get pages 1 through 4, you get to read the full story, but basically page 2, Trampled Journal. We fought in the East Gallery, filled with portraits of our ancient lineage, uncaring witnesses to the slaughter. Al has read the fiery heartbeat of our retinue wrought keen havoc in our enemy's ranks. I keenly feel his absence, even as I remember voiding myself upon seeing his lifeless body fall, blood pouring from his screaming mouth, and some cruel knife having rent his lungs to gore. Yet we were victorious, and thus we pressed on. Brutal. But that's it. And that's the end of our quest. Not bad, I say, for our first run. How are we doing for money? No, it'll take all the way through all these if you want. If you just press next, it fast forwards to this part. Uh, so we've got 3,000 for completing the quest. 3,185 found. Uh, four crests plus four more down here. Uh, we got a trinket. Debuff skill change, which we care less about. Uh, we got a couple other heirlooms. Some uh, bus and a portrait. Not bad. And more importantly, we got some XP for our two level zero guys. This will keep them from stretching out as much as the next ones. Fear of Eldritch, that's a bad one. Minus accuracy, my, uh, more stress against Eldritch targets. And Imposter Syndrome, this is a new one where he will basically just say, Oh, I'm a fraud, and not attack. And I think that's the worst I've seen him do. Diurnal. Uh, lower speed if the torch is too low. Torch light. Um, that's okay, because if we basically just keep the light up, then she'll never have this penalty. So that's totally a workable uh, Negative quirk, I care less about that one. But now we go back to the hamlet, like always. It'll give us our week two. The degeneracy of the hamlet is nothing, I fear, when compared to the condition of surrounding acres. Basically, here's the quest. Yes, they were successful. Notice that two of our characters leveled up. Yay, us. Uh, the Ruins has advanced to Mastery 1, that'll be important, you'll see later. Uh, the Tavern is now unlocked, and the Abbey is now unlocked, so we have two new buildings to explore. Let's go explore those before we call it a day, shall we? The cobwebs have been dusted, the pews set straight. The Abbey calls to the faithful. So this is one of our stress relief buildings, okay? Notice how the uh, caretaker here is enjoying one of the spots. There's two different stress release buildings, this one and the bar, okay? So the saloon over here is the next one we're getting ready to go to. Um, it's all basically the same setup. Three different spots that you can release stress. The amount increases from 1,000 to 1,250 to 1,500. I want to say, I don't know this, but I want to say that the more expensive one is the best one for releasing stress, but it costs more. I don't know that for a fact. Hopefully that is not the case, because then, then you want the cheapest one possible. You will normally peel off stress as long as they're not in combat. If they're not uh, part of the next party, they will relieve stress anyway. But not this much fast. You want it fast, then you need to spend it to get it down. Um, we're not going to do that one just yet because A, we could probably get cheaper at the bar. And B, she's prone to investigating the dark arts. If we send her into some of these, some of their quirks can be negative. Uh, in the uh, stress relief buildings. Like if he's a drunk, for example, you send him to the bar to relieve some stress, that could be bad. He could go on a bender and he wouldn't be available next turn. 
but uh, the reason the caretaker takes up a spot, he always does one spot in one of the two buildings. What's worse is when it's the one spot that you can see, Renal can only pray for stress relief, which is this one right here. If the caretaker was here and I needed him to relieve stress, then he's screwed because there's nothing I can do about it. I can open these extra slots up. That's what these are. They're walled up. And that's what this uh, steadily increases. So we increase the stress recovery, how much it costs, then it unlocks the second spot, uh, and then it, it uh, increases the, it decreases the cost again, and then it unlocks the third slot. You want to at least unlock the seconds um, for full effect, because that way, no matter what, if you have one guy that really needs this spot, and he's taking it up, then you have another spot right here for him. Obviously, you want to unlock all, but that costs a lot of caress. Fresh kegs, cards, and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. See, so she can go here for a thousand. I don't know how much stress this is going to peel off of her, but I can increase the stress recovery here with a minimal investment, and I'm going to do so. With enough ale, maybe they can be inured against the horrors below. I can reduce the treatment cost by 15%, so instead of being a thousand, it would be 850. That's money. You know, I'm not gonna say no, but this is where you get into the decision-making side of this game. Those, uh, not deep, sorry, the portraits and the crests can be used for other things, for other buildings, for other upgrades. It may behoove me to hold off on spending all those if I can help. Okay, so here's our new teams. So we can get we can pick any or all let's look at them first cove foe we want to get rid of that because he's good in the cove cove monsters don't like being blighted and he's a, one of our blighters kind of like her but he's a weapon tinker so we can upgrade his weapon for a decreased cost that's nice and he's an unholy slayer so where we're just fighting we're the unholy the undead basically he's got better accuracy and better crit chance against them so he's a pretty good character and they take blight damage too so he's pretty good for that place so let's take him Tortured and reclusive. This man is more dangerous than he seems. Now here's the bounty hunter. The bounty hunter has the gips. That's not great. Accuracy debuff, and you can already see that right here. Uh, he's hard skinned, though, so he has built in protection. So he takes less damage from attacks, and he's, he's not a meat shield like the Renault is, but with that, he's not that bad. So he could be up front. We'll take him as well. The thrill of the hunt. The promise of payment. Lastly, we have another Vestal. And like I said before, it never hurts to have more than one of those because she's a dedicated healer. She's good at it. She's more of a battle Vestal, as you see. Hand of Light, Illumination, all those moves are up front. Uh, Mace Bash is uh, position one or two in the, the ranks. The healing, though, she has to be in three or four to get that to fire off. So if we want her to be a healer, we need her to be in position three at least. A sister of battle, pious and unrelenting. Now, we're not going to go to our next battle yet because this video's gone on long enough. But A, I wanted to show you that we unlocked a new area, the farmstead. This is part of the new DLC. And the courtyard isn't uh, available just yet. But that's another area that we're going to go into. That's from that other DLC, the Crimson Courtyard. Uh, the ruins in the cove are places where blight is more important. Horns and the wheel are places where bleeds are more important. Doesn't mean that they're useless in the other places, but as you saw in the ruins last time, the skeletons weren't being bled. But there were plenty of humans there. The, the one lady with the stressed attack and the guy that looked like Wolverine, he's human. You can bleed those guys. So bleeds aren't impossible or useless, but you're more likely to, to land blights in these places and bleeds in these two. For these ones, it's kind of a free for all, same with the darkest dungeon. But uh, so far, we can go to the farmstead, which we're not going to do that just yet. Um, it be a little tougher. Uh, uh, we're going to do one of these ruin missions here. What we'll probably do is... Uh, we have an abomination, so this would be a trinket for just him. Virtue chances, uh, kind of lame. Um, I think that helps level him up faster. Uh, I like this one, though. Accuracy for melee skill, plus five. No negative to it, either. That's a nice one. Uh, this one's for Dismas. Uh, Highwayman's. Dismiss. Uh, trap disarm chance, more dodge, but he takes, or not, not takes the more stress. He doesn't heal stress as well. He's only 5%, though. That's not bad either. 
uh, and this one's more dodge, but a chance to be slid around, so moved out of position, which isn't great, not horrible. This will probably be the one that we do next time. But with that, my name is Brother Mean. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Now that I finally figured out how to get this video to work right, uh, I'll be doing more of these um, along with the other two LPs that I'm doing right now. So hopefully you guys enjoy this new content. It's a different type of game, very immersive, very fun. And one of the best things about it is you can do a mission like the ones we were just looking at, and that'd be the entire video. It's like 20 to 30 minutes depending on how you do it. Prep time, setting up, walking through it, exploring the whole area. It can be anywhere from 10, 15 minutes to 30 minutes or longer. So those would be good little snippets of videos, I think, for you guys. If it's a short one or if we die quickly, I'll probably do another one back to back. But I think that's a good start. With that, I'll see you guys then. Bye now.